Hello and welcome to the Superliminal Developer Commentary. I'm Albert, Game Director of Superliminal. Myself and the rest of the team will be popping up every now and then as you play. With subtitles open, you can see who is talking and what their role on the game is. Our patent pending Somnoscope technology provides safe and effective dream therapy while you rest in the comfort of our flagship clinic. Located right next to the secondary overflow parking lot at the University Medical Center. Somnoscope will make your dreams come true. Hi, my name's Chris. I was the producer and designer on Superliminal. Hi, this is Will O'Neill, and I was the writer on Superliminal. Okay, so that very beginning of Superliminal is actually one of the last parts we finished. Throughout development, we created so many different introductions to the game. Not all of them were cutscenes, like that one, but we ended up feeling that that in-game video sequence offered a really smooth on-ramp that let us set the framework for what's to come. By keeping it grounded in the world, rather than just a video, we felt it to be a good way to get you situated in the game and aware of what's up. So when I wrote the opening line of, are you filled with feelings of self-doubt at the beginning of the game, I was definitely envisioning a player immediately unconsciously responding with yes. And of course the purpose of that is to sort of pull you into the idea that you're not playing a character in the game, that it's, it's you inside this experience. And of course, making it clear that the clinic itself is not necessarily the safest or most prestigious place to get treated creates an immediate tension, especially when the very first thing you do in the game is accidentally sign away all of your rights. During eyelids, you will lose the ability to awaken suddenly due to realizing that this is a dream. Hi there, I'm Steve, I'm the art director of Superliminal. This is a dream. You did not wake up. One of up. our main visual touchstones for this section centers around a couple of silly questions. What would someone in the early 90s dream up as a futuristic testing facility? And how could they build that on a shoestring budget but with infinite time? I feel like those two questions were ones we actually asked ourselves more than once during the process of making this game. All environments perceived during eyelids should reflect a typical mental state. If you believe your mental state was compromised by Somnasculpt, please provide a comprehensive, rational explanation in your post-procedural survey. Completed surveys may be eligible Hi, I'm Logan, and I'm level designer on Superliminal. We had this looping hallway for a while. Our core game mechanic is so novel that we immediately drew comparisons to other quasi-sci-fi puzzle games. And, since our game is about playing with and subverting expectations, we wanted to lean into that and start the first level with a kind of test chamber aesthetic, and immediately break that going forward. Narratively, this space is what Dr. Pierce planned to have his dream therapy program look like before it all went wrong. Please stand by for polite recognition on your completion of the Somnasculpt orientation. You did it. To maximize the time allotted for your therapeutic journey, please do not delay in proceeding through the final doorway as indicated.
The reason we ended up with this sleep clinic section is because we wanted to convince players that they might have actually woken up from the dream. So we don't have any dreamlike mechanics you can play with until you get to the vending machine. Later on, this becomes a hub you come back to in order to emphasize the- Hey, this is Matt. I did the music and sound. So my brief for the jazz part of this soundtrack was always to do my best to emulate the iconic solo jazz piano sound of the great Bill Evans. For that, I listened to an album called Alone. My process was to try to compose my own superliminal jazz standards. I fleshed out the first chorus and melody. Later on, I workshopped and recorded with my good friend John Reeves. And I'm so glad I did because his piano skills are so much better than mine. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'd like to talk to you about being special. So special, in fact, that we have no idea where you are. But not to worry, we're working on it. Hi, my name is Ryan and I was the principal artist on Superliminal. Optical's Pink Hotel Hallway was the first area we nailed down visually and served as a starting point for how we approached the art for the rest of the game. We wanted enough decoration for it to be interesting to the player, yet it couldn't have too much visual noise or else the player would get lost and overwhelmed. We made interactable objects the complementary color of the surrounding environment, which helped them pop more and feel more important. After we were happy with how this part of the game felt, the rest of the locales came together much quicker and we required less iteration. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'm just popping in to give you a quick update on where you are. We still don't know, but please keep moving forward and hopefully you prefer frequent updates to being reminded that you are completely lost. My name is Phil Fortier, and I was the graphics programmer on Superliminal, and I also worked on some of the Easter egg design. Before you grab the moon in the next room, please notice that it looks quite far away. An interesting fact is that it actually isn't that far at all. But because the moon's position is moving with your position, it seems to be infinitely far away. You should also find a variety of emergency exit signs that should lead you to them. Will all of this work? Absolutely. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. In the event that this elevator does not wake you up, please don't interact with anything that strikes you as psychologically significant. This is an automated message for all patients who attempted to use an alternate pathway to access the next phase of Somnasculpt therapy, but who have become trapped in a dream state paradox instead. Your decisions imply a failure of orientation, which reflects negatively on the standard orientation protocol. You will rectify this failure immediately.
So the standard orientation protocol character is obsessed with proper orientation, and that makes her kind of thematically antagonistic to the idea of truth being, you know, intrinsically tied to perspective. But to me, the fun part of it was writing her as being cruel without there being any actual malice to it. Like, she has nothing against you personally. Her programming simply can't see beyond proper orientation as being... Between the colorful dream spaces, we have these, what we call, back areas. These back areas serve as the backdrop to everything. They are where the dream spaces are built, and also the service hallways in between them. We wanted to give them a colder, darker feel to contrast with other spaces in the game. But we also wanted to keep a man-made feel, as if people were just here moving things, creating these spaces, doing work. Originally, we had little plaques indicating exhibits within the museum, but we felt it was a little bit too on the nose, so to speak. You are the main exhibit, so I imagine the players wandering around a game with an exhibit plaque hanging around their necks. Please note that a reluctance to volunteer for Not all of our interesting perspective moments can be built into puzzles. Some are just great moments that break your expectations. This level interprets a cube in multiple different ways, and even though none of these are difficult puzzles, they all work together to create a whole series of back-to-back -back surprise moments. It was fun finding the balance of making it feel like someone was messing with you without making it feel like the cube is sentient. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and despite... This level came about because we explored the idea of the game being an anthology of different stories, one story for each level. This level was the horror level, and I immediately knew what it would be about, getting the player to be scared of their own shadow. None of the scares are... One aspect we wanted to explore and draw from was movie scene cuts, basically how a match cut in a movie might make sense in a game. This next moment is a good example. Carefully watch the cloud in the distance. You'll see that it cuts to a new scene. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'd like to talk more about the feelings of worthlessness and self-doubt I mentioned before. You feel this way because you want the kind of happy life you see all around you, the kind you know everyone else is enjoying. And that's exactly why we're here to help. Warning. The object used in this puzzle was originally a flashlight, but unfortunately, because of how the mechanic works, it always placed the flashlight at the end of the room, which is not a particularly useful position for a flashlight. 
We tried a couple of things, but finally decided to switch to an object that could glow from both ends. Did you know that unintentional multi-dream layering occurs When I prototyped this part, there was going to be a shadow of a monster on the wall that turned out to be a bunch of random objects when the lights turned on. The shadow always looked silly though, so eventually the reveal became the blood actually being red paint. We wanted to do a unique alarm clock for each level, but this is the only one that survived that idea. Attention, Dr. Pierce requires you to note Yeah, so this uh, right click to return sign that I bet you didn't even notice. Memory loss. Yeah, so this uh, right click to return sign that I bet you didn't even notice is one of the most unread signs in the game. It comes up later and it's also one of the most unread signs in the game there too. Not yet been discovered or which cannot be understood. Let's talk about the smiley face. Because our goal was to break people's expectations, we prototyped a lot of weird moments like these. Some of them didn't work because they felt too meta. They would actually take people out of the game experience. This one, however, stayed because it was just subtle enough and playful enough that you could see it as a bout of insanity. Warning, Dr. Pierce is frantically submitting numerous spelling and grammar mistakes into the standard orientation protocol in a desperate attempt to counsel you. I have no subroutine to correct these errors, but I cannot compromise the integrity of the standard orientation protocol. You will not receive these messages. They would not make sense regardless.
Attention. Dr. Pierce continues to input significant Players may error. notice the motif of the repeating purple hallway found throughout Clone. We wanted the player to have this feeling of, have I been here before? This seems pretty familiar, but we didn't want it to be too easy or to be 100% unclear. So we introduced differences such as lighting, prop placement, and hallway length. That way, for most players, it was something chewing away at the back. This room kind of happened by accident. We originally just put a cloud video texture as placeholder as a way to expand on the cloud motif. It ended up working so well and fitting the tone so well that we made this a private theater room in the sleep clinic. It evokes a nostalgic and relaxing but slightly creepy feeling which seemed to fit the game perfectly. And discontinue whatever you were doing immediately prior to that. The sound effects that probably took the most tweaking were definitely all associated with the resizable objects. For them, I had to make a collision matrix so that the sound of you dropping a box or a cube would smoothly change from its smallest to its largest size and anywhere in between. So to achieve that, there were lots of different layers of the sounds, lots of automated pitch shifting speeding up, slowing down, lots of crossfading between different layers of the sound, and a lot of trial and error to get it Hello. feeling right My inside the game. Dr. Glenn Pierce. In addition to continuing and discontinuing as mentioned earlier, please also disregard any unsettling experiences that you may have recently had. Everything should have now reverted to being soothing and therapeutic. If this is not the case, you may be receiving this message in error. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'd like to read you my favorite inspirational quote by me. The worst thing you can do is focus on negativity. It won't spare you from the cage of death, the pain of disease, the cruelty of time, the cold shell of human nature, or the eventual loss of everything you've ever held dear. Whatever you do, don't focus on that. This puzzle existed for a long time, but it took a while to figure out what the art was going to be because the bouncy castle used to just be a weird L-shaped block. Eventually, we landed on the pool motif and the bouncy castle and added a little bit where you go inside the vent.
Because we have portals that you can resize, the player can freely change their own size. This actually created a design problem because you could never predict what size the player was supposed to be. And if we dynamically change the size of the geometry later on in the level, things could break really easily. So instead, we added these portals, like this doorway over here, which changes size in order to resize you back to the normal scale of a human. Another weird thing about player resizing is that gravity is actually constant across all sizes. So imagine you are in the perspective of an ant, and a giant shoe is coming down from the sky to step on you. That shoe in your mind might take a couple seconds, but in real life, it would be instant. Whatever size you are, large objects traveling through space should feel like they are moving slowly. So when we change the player size, we're actually also adjusting gravity in order to compensate for this as well. This is physically incorrect, but this feels better for the player. So that's my cat. <laughs> His name is Finn, and he's a good boy. And we only had a day or two left before finishing the game, and we needed to figure out what kind of posters to put in our elevators. So that's my cat. <laughs> His name is Finn, and he's a good boy. And we only had a day or two left before finishing the game. The emergency exit protocol is the shortest lived character in the game, but my heart really goes out to him. Because just like a triangle player in an orchestra, he has precisely one job and he waits patiently for his moment to do it, only of course to have it snatched away just as that moment arrives. I think many people can identify with this feeling. Error analysis complete. You are exhibiting signs consistent with an increase in fear, hopelessness and frustration. This is inconceivable as Somnasculpt therapy is proven to correlate with a decrease in these emotions. Hypothesis. Patient was improperly oriented. Conclusion. Impossible. Reformulating. Improved hypothesis. Patient requires additional somnasculpt therapy. Conclusion. Emergency exit protocol cannot proceed. Emergency exit protocol has been emergency destroyed. Instruction, continue with Somnasculpt therapy indefinitely on an independent basis as all orientation resources have been exhausted. This concludes your standard orientation protocol. Goodbye.
My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce. Thank you for completing the Somnisculpt Standard Orientation Protocol. Before you begin the first phase of therapy, I'd like to briefly describe the finite and fragile nature of the dream state. We had all these surprise moments prototyped, and so I wondered what it would feel like if we had a whole level of surprise moments. I wanted it to be fast-paced. The working title for this level was Chase. This is the boss level of the game, basically. It's inspired by the third act of the movie Brazil, how it gets crazier and faster paced over time. Of course, nothing is more challenging than the difficulty of changing perspective, of fundamentally altering your perceptions in a way that will enable you to face dire, trial-by-fire scenarios with solutions that could not be found otherwise. music throughout the game really goes through a significant transformation, but the piano is always there to guide you. Even as the music becomes darker and more electronic, it always has the melody, or at least a really significant role to play. It changes as you progress through the game. I switch to different types of piano, starting out with a piano Bill Evans famously recorded on. Later, switching to a more modern sounding instrument. I double it with prepared piano sounds sometimes, I use felt piano, and gradually more reverbs and delays as the game evolves. But at the heart of each piece is the piano. every patient, you must understand that it is possible to completely exhaust your supply of dreams, thereby entering a state in which you will not be able to wake up, even with the help of triggering mechanisms. My name is Phil Fortier, and I was the graphics programmer on Superliminal, and I also worked on some of the Easter egg design. So when I joined the project, this infinite elevator sequence wasn't actually infinite. It was just a very large block of, I don't know, 20 by 10 elevators. And the performance, as a result, wasn't very good. And the illusion could be ruined if you walked all the way to one side. So one of the things I did was actually make it infinite. So there's a much smaller block of real elevators and the player gets teleported seamlessly by portals on each end. Um, and so the end result is an infinite elevator sequence that you can just go in one direction forever. This is highly unusual. It appears you have entered the Somnasculpt Diagnostic Framework. Patients do not have access to this dream. Diagnostic warning. Unrealistic use of dream objects may result in dream integrity fail state state states. Please paradox from creating any refrains. Explosive dream overload may result. Please paradox.
So coming up with the way to actually make the portal and a portal make sense for the player was a really tough problem. And we iterated on this for weeks with input from all the different team members. So it was really a This spatio-temporal moment of wonder is brought to you by the very long but invisible rectangular portals tucked behind these empty windows, looking out into other parts of the level you may soon travel to. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn. This final level was designed with the idea of removing depth perception entirely. All the visuals are flattened. I found myself in a place where I understood that each of us begins as nothing, where everything I perceived was shaped by seeing it exactly the way I wanted to. White space. But in white space, since the universe that the players inhabit is seemingly created in almost a kitbash way while within Somnusculpt, it was a unique challenge to show the players truly a peek behind the curtains of the system. A blank canvas, a scratch dot in it, an empty sticky note with some notes, little things creatively interspersed throughout. I think I derived some of the inspiration for what happens when you're playing a VR game and suddenly the game crashes to a totally white space. That feeling of disorientation even though you understand the world around you is an illusion. Negative space is another concept related to changing expectations and changing your perceptions of an object. Negative space is another concept related to changing expectations and changing your perceptions of an object. This puzzle works really well because the solution is obvious in retrospect, but it takes people a couple of seconds in order to figure out. We actually had to add the looping hallway because without it, people would run out of things to do and immediately start rubbing their bodies against the walls and come to the solution almost immediately. Well beyond dreaming now and further out than anyone has ever come back from. But we hope that you won't get discouraged. After all, if this is a place of pure perspective, isn't it also a place where a different point of view could make anything possible? Isn't that why you came here?
my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and by now, you may have realized that all of this has happened exactly the way it was supposed to. This last section was something that Logan and I worked together on for a really long time. When I first saw it, I had this great feeling for how it could be like a, a really nice, impactful moment. And so I got this really uh, kind of awe-inspiring, inspirational music to put behind it. And Logan absolutely hated it. I stuck to my guns and, and asked him to stick with it for a while and play it for a couple of days, a couple of weeks, and see how things went. And he ended up totally coming around to my side of thinking. Um, initially, we were unsure if we went for this kind of pure feeling that it would just be really hokey. Um, and I ended up reading this essay on television written by David Foster Wallace. And it really kind of encouraged me to kind of get over that sort of postmodern, uh, too cool for anything aesthetic and to just really go gung ho into sort of rewarding you for, for ending the game by giving you something really nice. This level was created early on. I liked the idea of giving the player some time to think about their journey rather than ending the game immediately, and I knew film-like cuts would be perfect for revisiting their experience through the game. Chris initially suggested a song for reference, and at first I hated it. I kept listening to it though, and eventually grew to love the song. Matt came up with a track that is even better than the reference material, and it fit perfectly. Your life will always be a struggle and you will always have problems. But today, you have the chance to see things differently. Even though it meant facing obstacles that seemed impossible at first, you thought outside the box, and you overcame them. Because you saw things from every angle, you understood them for what they really were. Because you kept moving forward, no matter how far off the path you were told you were headed, or how unexpected it became, you found your way. in the real world, and some part of you will say that none of this was real, so how could it have really meant anything? But just like the power of perspective itself, it will have been as real as you believed it to be. All you've got to do is wait. Terms of service accepted. Congratulations on falling asleep. Welcome to Somnasculpt. Your progress may be monitored by... Terms of service accepted. Congratulations on falling asleep. Welcome to Somnasculpt. Your progress may be monitored by qualified specialists. This orientation will adapt you to eyelids, our interactive, loot... Terms of service accepted. Congratulations on falling asleep. Welcome to Somnasculpt. Your progress may be monitored by qualified specialists. This orientation will adapt you to eyelids. Terms of service accepted. Congratulations on falling asleep. Welcome to Somnasculpt. Your progress may... Terms of service accepted. Congratulations on falling asleep. Welcome to Somnasculpt. Your progress may be monitored by... Terms of service accepted. Congratulations on falling asleep. Welcome to Somnasculpt. Your progress may be monitored by qualified specialists. 
This orientation will adapt you to eyelids, our interactive, lucid induction dream state in which you retain full consciousness and control. Confirmed. You can move freely, interact with surrounding objects, and listen to messages from your patient care team. Please note that I am the standard orientation protocol, and that my voice has been explicitly chosen to remind you that I am not a part of your patient care team. I do not care. During eyelids, you will lose the ability to awaken suddenly due to realizing that this is a dream. Evidence. I have already informed you that this is a dream. You did not wake up. Please complete the remaining orientation activities.
All environments perceived during eyelids should reflect a typical mental state. If you believe your mental state was compromised by Somnasculpt, please provide a comprehensive, rational explanation in your post-procedural survey. Completed surveys may be eligible.
Please stand by for polite recognition on your completion of the Somnasculpt orientation. You did it. To maximize the time allotted for your therapeutic journey, please do not delay in proceeding through the final doorway as indicated. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'd like to talk to you about being special. So special, in fact, that we have no idea where you are. But not to worry, we're working on it. Hello, my name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, 
and I'm just popping in to give you a quick update on where you are. We still don't know, but please keep moving forward and hopefully you prefer frequent updates to being reminded that you are completely lost. My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and we still can't find you. But you should now have access to a series of elevators that should trigger your subconscious to gradually wake you up. You should also find a variety of emergency exit signs that should lead you to them. This is an automated message for all patients who attempted to use an alternate pathway to access the next phase of Somnasculpt therapy, but who have become trapped in a dream state paradox instead. Your decisions imply a failure of orientation, which reflects negatively on the standard orientation protocol. You will rectify this failure immediately. Professional tip, the average adult can only withstand 3 to 5 dreams per night. Once this threshold is eclipsed by entering more dreams, your mind will suffer an explosive mental overload, reorienting you for the emergency exit protocol. Please subject yourself to explosive mental overload. Note that a reluctance to volunteer for the risks associated with explosive mental overload implies a misunderstanding of all other solutions, all of which are far more traumatic and likelier to result in catastrophe. I am not. 